Catania Alvin, Daddy Dragon discussing coronavirus bill and this um, whole situation and the letter that Robin Tilbrook, who is talking, has written and we will see that shortly. is that the government itself has become you know, really the sole operating bit of the constitution. Um, and they've sort of shed the, uh, uh, the, the uh, even the House of Commons in terms of passing new law. Um, and the sole remaining vestige of real decision-making power that the House of Commons has got is that every six months they're going to be allowed to, to vote on whether the powers continue. Now, what I want to point out here is if you have looked at some of the videos that are going around, and I think I pointed it out, John Rappaport brought up the fact that, and if you could look in on my YouTubes, you will see that actually the CDC advised, uh, I'm going to put it this way, allegedly advised uh, anyone who died, irrespective of what they died of, the, di the death was to be put down as a coronavirus death. And there have been interesting backups of people acknowledging that that actually has been happening. And I was looking at the UK column information and I want to bring that up and make a video of that as well in the same session, whereby that is what they had found. So these figures that they're putting out give us no true picture, no true picture of really what is going on. And the John Rappaport article that I used was talking about the payment that the various departments would get, but the payments... If somebody was admitted to hospital, they would get a certain amount of money. If they went on respiratory, they would get uh, even more money. And if they, I think there was a, a third stage, uh, they would get even more money. So when you look at actually what is being done, when you start to realize that this is a financial hoax, and when you start to realize that that they're pushing both the mainstream media to hype it up, hype the numbers up, and also that there is this, the doctors have been told ev whatever it is that anybody dies of, it has to be put down to COVID virus. All right? Very interesting. There's something extremely sick and fishy going on. Um, well, this is going to occur in a House of Commons where the absolute majority of are in Boris Johnson's party, um, Conservative Party. Uh, so there's no real realistic prospect of um, the coronavirus um, emergency powers being removed by any political means um, for as long as Boris Johnson and co actually want to continue those powers. Now, this is very interesting. I'm just going to bring across here, this is Robin Tilbrook's, who you've just been listening to, his website and this is donation for the lockdown for the legal battle fighting fund so i'm have my glasses on let's see if there's a video here well here you've got an opportunity of funding a one-time fund of 25 pounds or but let's read what he says if we are to remain free men and women we must challenge the government on this unprecedented lockdown and their ability to suspend our rights, regardless of the veracity or lack of, in this case, the principles of democratic rule is at stake. So I need your help to challenge this government in court. And that was on the 23rd of April, the English Democrats, the English Nationalist Political Party, started a judicial review against the Prime Minister and Health Secretary, 
we are arguing that the government's lockdown regulation are unlawful. Okay, I'll read that again. We are arguing that the government's lockdown regulations are unlawful. Attached is our judiciary review protocol letter served in support of the challenge. The government is expected to reply by the 30th of April. So that's interesting. We're now on the 5th, 4th of May, when I'm I'll probably get it up later today. I hope so, or tomorrow. And so view legal document. So we're going to click that in a minute. And Solicitor Robin Tilbrook, who is the chairman of the English Democrats, said that the lockdown over the coronavirus panic is causing huge damage to our country's economy and to traditional rights and freedoms of England. So we'll go there. Okay. Right, I'm now continuing back with Robin Tilbrook um, because on this video that I'm on now we will see the letter and, and there'll be a, a link in the description box where you can open up the PDF. And since they're being allowed uh, under the current arrangements to rewrite all sorts of bits of legislation uh, that have nothing whatever to do with the um, coronavirus or anything else to do with, with the um, pandemic, um, then I, 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 don't know whether, I don't know whether they won't get very comfortable with the idea that um, they could pass any law that they fancy without having to go through any hassle or argument. Uh, it's you know there's another word dictatorship fascism communism we've swung right into the left far left and uh, I mean I, I, I'll give you a for instance of something that um, uh, I think should, should create concern um, so I, I mentioned about the care packages um, which I think is a pretty radical change to a be able to be occurring by ministerial order, in effect, rather than because of legislation, particularly when it's actually expressly contrary to what the legislation said. But another thing that they were trying to change um, was... That's an interesting point, that was actually contrary to what the legislation said. Contrary. This is why it's very important to become mindful of your rights. Do your history. Follow Daddy Dragon, Robin Tilbrook. You get an immense amount of constitutional history here. Very important, we know. And I tell you what, when you've got a shoe that pinches, you do something about it. It's um, to make it much, much easier to get, a, to get abortions. Uh, and for much, much longer through the uh, period of uh, pregnancy. It's very interesting because Robin Tilbrook is the, um, is, is the I think, the chairman of the uh, Democratic Party. But in America, the Democrats are pro-abortion and the um, Republicans are anti-abortion. Maybe I shouldn't actually do it right down the line that way. But Trump is definitely anti-abortion. And abortions have become a business. And most shocking things are being done in abortion clinics. And I, as I understand it, they've actually all closed down at the moment. Could be wrong. Um, and they, they were basically trying to sneak that in exactly the same way. Um, the Christian Concern did, did spot that and have, have objected. Um, I'm, not, I'm not aware of how far they've got in terms of um, opposition to it, um, and it may well go through at some point. It may even have gone through, for all I, I'm aware, um, because we're not told what's, what's going through. No, exactly. If you listen to our media, they, they don't tell us anything about what, what's actually going on. Uh, it, it, it seems to be all about um, basically propagandising the, um, uh, the, the lockdown. Um, Whilst I talk about that, can, can I just mention, you, you were saying about all the rules and regulations that um, uh, people are supposed to apply uh, in the lockdown. Um, 
So, for instance, one of the things that, that, that's come out of nowhere, there's no um, legislation or rule that requires it, but wherever you go now, um, if you get into some queue or um, uh, you're queuing to go to the shop or whatever, you, you're now required to stand uh, two metres apart. Um, and um, you know, if you go to Tesco, for example, you they've got it all marked out. You do got a spot that you should stand on, and um, uh, you quickly wind up with lots of people protesting against you if you uh, break, break that. Uh, there was a government minister yesterday who was um, saying how ridiculous this was because it, cause it, there isn't actually uh, any rule that says you've got to be two meters apart. Um, there isn't, uh, you know, there's some, there's some, there's some, there's some, there are some government guidelines somewhere about uh, distancing, but it doesn't take two metres apart. Uh, there's no science behind two metres apart. I mean, this is, this, this, uh, there's no science, there's no law. As far as we can tell, it's a contagious disease, not an infectious one, in other words, not airborne. Ask yourself, why are you doing it? Are you just being a sheeple? Are you just following the herd? You know, we, we, we're all busy. Well, many of us are busy. And we say we don't think, we don't find out. Time to find out, guys. Um, unless somebody literally sneezes directly in your face, um, who's got it, uh, and therefore some droplets go into your eyes, nose, mouth, you're only going to get it through, through contagion. Uh, so um, standing two metres apart in the autumn cube test is really completely a um, waste of time and hopeless. Um, whereas the thing that they don't do is wipe the handles of um, all the uh, trolleys and so on with disinfectant because actually touching the uh, handle of the trolley um, you could possibly pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, so wear gloves. If the previous person that, or one of the previous people that's used it in the um, previous hour or so uh, is um, somebody who's got the coronavirus and you animals who haven't had it. So they now think that quite a large proportion of us actually have had it. Um, so we've, we've not only got um, undemocratic and I think unconstitutional restrictions on our um, freedom of movement, freedom of assembly, freedom of expression, you know, all sorts of things uh, which uh, have suddenly come out of, of, of really nowhere in terms of there being any scientific basis for restricting them. Uh, but we've also got a situation where people have gone even further than um, the rules actually allow. And it's not its not just Tesco, it's also the police. So we've had all sorts of examples of police going around hassling people who are, for instance, in one, in one example, exercising by walking their dog um, on uh, moorland um, with prob probably hundreds of yards, let alone two metres uh, from any other person and, they, and they've got drones going over them and sort of naming and shaving these people um, and, and then when, when the, um, the police force concerned the Derbyshire police uh, were criticised their chief constable came on saying that he, you know, he was standing up for the police force in doing this um, there's, there's no legal basis for, for what they were doing at all they were, they, were, they were basically vastly overreacting. No legal basis, because the assumption is that this is what they're doing is legal. It is not. Um, and I think what we've got there was a glimpse of just how far the police would go you know, if, if they were given unrestricted powers to hassle all the rest of us. You know, they, they would get stuck into and um, ordering us around for no particularly good reason, um, just because they 